Immersion is as old as time itself. When we talk about narration, it's always immersive. If someone wants to tell an exciting story, or when you read an exciting book, you emerge into that story. We, as a form of media, through both sound and image, can add to this narrative immersion with something we call perceptive immersion. Therefore, we can give you the perception of being at the centre of that story, to be an actor or in any case a first-hand witness. And it's there that we find the essence of our work. It's to give the author more possibilities to immerse the reader, listener or spectator. That's our objective. Humans love beauty and have done from the moment we embarked on the path to improvement. Before humans exchanged directly with each other, having to travel if they wanted to exchange with someone. But then came the discovery of waves, allowing us to send sound followed by images at the level of quality that was available to us at the time. But already the essence of the message was being transmitted. And then little by little in the history of sound came stereophony, as we began to reproduce a portion of our spatial perception. And then, just like surround, multi-channel and 5.1 formats and sound, image 2 began to evolve, bringing formats such as HD, 4K, 8K, etc. So we followed this evolution with its acceleration. If we look at virtual reality, a phenomenon that comes principally from video games, we can see a real development on digital platforms in the last few years alone. So you can see that today we have a way of taking information from the imagination of the creator and transmitting it to a large audience with a quality, or at least a rendering, such that we're totally immersed in the story, to an extent that was previously not possible. To put it simply, I think that humans are drawn to beauty, and it's more beautiful today than it was a century ago. When making music for my own pleasure, I discovered a potential problem. Part of the emotion comes from the space, because space isn't anodyne. We in our everyday lives evolve in this space, and our relation to this space is very important to our perception of the world and equally to our emotional connection with others as well as objects and sounds. I was convinced of the importance of this spatial dimension in music. Not that I've invented anything new here, well before my time, space has played a role in the composition of music, since the Middle Ages, perhaps even before. But the 20th century has seen some very important figures in music. In particular, Pierre Boulez and Pierre Schaeffer, to name but a few French names, also Stockhausen and others from Italy of whom I forget the names. These people had already thought of many things, namely the placement of sound within a space and how to move that sound in a live setting in front of a live audience. However, at the time, the tools were rudimentary, or at least limited, and they didn't have the means to diffuse it on a large scale. All of these people had something in common. They saw the value of space. To use their words, as they're far more enlightened than my own, Stockhausen predicted in the 50s or 60s that tomorrow, the next century, spatial composition will be as important as the vertical and horizontal in music. That's to say, as important as melody and harmony. Today, with the large network that is the internet, it would be such a shame not to exploit the capacity of calculation within the tools of production and playback. They allow us to propose new tools and new spaces for creation, as we see the spaces for creation multiplying. Today's musicians must think in terms of musicality when composing. They create their sounds, they make and adapt their own instruments, but they also have the intervening factor of space. It becomes very permissive, enabling an interaction between the world of sound and the world of image. People will be able to create variables that will allow interactions. They will also themselves have to be creators. They will need to have a vision. So, we have this enormous creative space lay before us. It would be terrible not to take advantage of it.